Hello guys, our topic for today is about counter example. So, i-define natin ano yung meaning ng counter example. So, it is a method of disproving a statement. It shows that it is false. So, yung counter example, ang purpose ng counter example is parang yung true statement na sinabi, sinasabi sa isang problem o sa certain situation, gagawin mong mali. Kung baga, hanapan mo siya ng butas, kung baga, dapat lalabas siyang mali ang statement na yon and then it develops critical thing critical attitude toward claims di ba for sa real world kasi daw pag may maangsang tao pag may sinabi sa yung isang parang may sinabi sa yung isang facts or about sa isang certain situation wag na wag kang maniniwala kaagad like i i analyze mo muna so maghahanap ka ng example para malaman mo kung totoo yung sinasabi niya sa iyo or gawa-gawa niya lang kaya yun yung purpose ng counter example hindi lang kung hindi lang sa mathematics tayo tinuturo, tinuturuan pwede din sa pang-araw-araw nating pamumuhay so for and next it test the idea by try examples yun na nga sabi ko gumagamit siya ng isang examples para ay sa isang example para i test kung yung sinabi ng isang tao sa iyo is tama or mali so kung makakahanap ka ng isang example na ma, na magiging dahilan para maging mali yung isang claims or isang situation ang tawag doon ay counter example now let's try to solve this problem number one about counter example so the instruction is verify that each of the following statement is incorrect by giving a counter example so meaning Itong statement, uh, itong sa letter A, na x over x is equals to 1, this is true. Kung baga, this is true statement. So, ito talaga yung answer niya. Kasi, x divided by x, pag, pag i-divide mo yan, is equals to 1 nga naman. Pero, uh, hanap ka ng way to counter example or counter act mo tong example na to para hindi siya equals to 1. So, ang gagawin mo dito is, maglilet ka, like example, let x is equals to 0. Now, bakit 0, hindi 1, hindi 2, 3, and above? Kasi kapag x is 3 or any other number, like example, x is 3. So, ibig sabihin, itong sa taas, ang numerator pati denominator sa 3. So, ibig sabihin, 3 divided by 3 will be equals to 1. Kaya hindi pwede. Kaya ang gagamitin natin will be 0 kasi 0 divided by 0 is not equals to 1. So, it meaning... Ang ipang counter act natin or ipang counter example natin dito sa ating statement na to ay ang 0 kasi 0 divided by 0 is not equal to 1. So, this implies that x or x divided by x is equal to 1 is not true for all x. So, we conclude that x over x is equal to 1 is not true. For all x. So, kapag 0 ang x natin, ibig sabihin, wala tayong value. So, hindi siya equals to 1. So, it's not true for x. Now, how about pagagamit tayo ng mga negative numbers? Same pa rin ang lalabas. For example, ang x natin. Ang x natin will be negative 5. Na pareho, ling, pareho pa rin kasi negative 5 divided by negative 5 will be equals to positive 1. Diba? Pas negative signs divided by the negative signs will be positive. So, negative, so positive 1 pa rin ang sagot. So, ang gagawin natin pag pinapahanap, pinapahanapan tayo ng counter example sa mga ganitong klaseng statement or ganitong equation, hahanap ka ng paraan para maging false ang claim ng isang statement. So, since 0 ang ginamit natin, which is not equals to 1, 0 divided by 0. So, ito na yung for counter example natin. Ito, this one. And then, we conclude that it's not true for all x since pwede naman magkaroon ng 0 na value ang x. So, that's it for letter A. Now, let's try for another problem. For our next problem, problem 1B, the square root of y squared plus 9 is equals to y plus 3. So, kung i-compute mo, mo nga naman to, y, the square root of y squared is y since may 2 cancel na lang to. And then, the square root of 9 is 3. Pero, gagawin natin false ang claim na to. So, hahanap tayo ng example para para maging false ang statement na to. So, since meron tayong y na variable, so same pa rin sa x, magagamit tayo ng maglilet tayo. 
So, let y is equals to, let's try for a simpler, simpler example, like, let y is equals to 1. So, 1 ang gagamitin natin. Na kung 1 ang gagamitin natin for y, anong mangyayari dito sa ating statement? And then, let's try to solve this one first, yung nasa left side na equation. So, which is the square root of y, the square root of y squared plus 9. Since ang y na in natin or nag tayo ng y na equals to 1, so ang value dito is equals to 1 raised to 2 plus 9, which is equals to the square, the square root of 10. Ayan. So, ibig sabihin, itong statement na to, ang dapat na answer niya ay the square root of 10. So, titignan natin kung magsasubstitute tayo ng 1 dito sa, sa ating right side na equation, kung lalabas siya na the square root of 10. Pero, obviously, y plus 3 is equals to 1 plus 3, which is 4. So, hindi siya pareho. Which means that this equation or this y squared plus 9 is equals to y plus 3 is a false statement. Y kasi, supposed to be, pag sa substitute ka nitong value ng 1 sa y dito sa ating left side na equation, dapat ang lalabas na answer is equals to negative 10. Supposed to be, dapat lalabas yung negative 10 from this one. Na, pero, yung lumabas, nung chinect natin, nung sinubstitute natin itong y plus 3, lumabas na ang answer natin is 4, which is not correct. Dahil supposed to be this equation will be equals to the square root of 10. So, this means na nahanap natin yung, pang, yung counter example for this statement. So, this statement is false since dapat y squared plus 9 is equals to the square root of 10. Pero, ang lumabas, it equals to 4. So, it's not correct. So, the statement is false. So, yun na. Nakahanap tayo ng pang counter example for our 1B problem. For our number 2 problem, we have here prove that a plus b raised to 2 is equals to a squared plus b squared is not an algebraic identity where a and b is a real number. So, ipoprove daw natin na itong statement na to is hindi siya magiging algebraic identity kasi algebraic identity to siya. Tingnan nyo kung ano yung nasa left side, yun din ang nasa right side. Yun, yun yung purpose ng algebraic identity. Pero gagawin natin hindi. So, gagawin natin false yung claim ngayon. Same pa rin. Ika-counter. Gagawin natin ng counter example. Now, mas mad madali lang naman to find counter example ng statement na to. Maglet, maglet ka lang din. Same lang sa nauna nating example. So, any number will do. Depende kung may specific number na pinapaano sa inyo ang proof nyo. Pero this one will be a real number. So, Pwede naman maging decimal unless di siya continuous na value. Pero mas prefer ko na whole number na lang. So, for let A is equals to 1. This is my assumption only for example only. And then B is equals to 2. So, assuming we have the value of A which is 1 and B which is 2. So, ang gagawin natin ngayon is substitute na lang natin tong value dito sa ating statement. So, unahin muna natin tong A plus B. And the quantity of a plus b raised to 2. Isa substitute natin yung value ng a pati b na inassume natin. So, therefore, this one, this a plus b raised to the square, the quantity of a plus b raised to 2. Lagi ko na, i-rewrite ko na lang. Plus b raised to 2 is equals to, di ba yung a natin na inassume natin is 1. And then plus b na inassume din natin which is 2. And then raised to 2. So, ang gagawin dyan, i-add mo muna kung ano yung nasa loob ng parenthesis. So, which is 1 plus 2 is 3. And then, raised to 2, 3 raised to 2 is equals to 9, which is 3 times 3 is equals to 9. So, 9. 9 yung value ng nasa kabila. And then, pero ang claim kasi dito, a plus, the quantity of a plus b raised to 2 is equals to a squared plus b squared. So, titignan natin. Kung itong value na to ay magiging 9. Kasi kung magiging 9 to, itong value ng a squared plus b squared, ibig sabihin, hindi, hindi natin yun nagawa ng paraan to, to come up with a counter example. So, dapat hindi 9 ang lalabas dito sa kabila. Dapat magiging false tong statement na to Yung original statement. Now, for the right side, ito ng right side na formula na equation, 
Lalagay ko na lang a squared plus b squared. And then substitute the value again. Use again the assumption, assum yung assumption natin na value. So, a is 1. Lagyan ko na lang ng parenthesis 2. Emphasize. And then raise to 2. Plus b, which is 2. Raise to 2 again. So, 1 raise to 2 is same pa rin naman. 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Plus 2 raise to 2, which is 2 times 2. 1 times 1, lagay ko na lang 1. And then plus 2 times 2, which is 4. Which is equals to 5. Now, observe na. Kung na-observe nyo, yung sinabi ko kanina, kung natandaan nyo na, dapat, itong answer ng statement sa so yung sa right side ay left side na statement, dapat ang answer niya will be equals to 9. Na ang lumabas, itong a squared plus b squared is 5. So therefore, the statement is false. This is not an identity anymore. So, hindi na siya algebraic identity. So, pwede kayong mag mag gumamit ng mga iba't ibang mga numbers. Basta as long as ma-prove nyo na hindi sila algebraic identity na ngayon. So, ibig sabihin, this a plus b, so therefore, a plus b squared is equals to a squared plus b squared is not an algebraic identity. So, ito na, nakahanap na tayo ng pang counter example for this statement na hindi na siya magiging algebraic identity. So, Pero may other example ako regarding this kind of statement or this equation. Kadalasan kasi, ang nangyayari, A plus B raised to 2, ang naisip ng mga ibang estudyante ay gumamit ng perfect square trinomial. Sa high school, which is yung pag meron kang ganito, A plus B raised to 2, or the quantity of A plus B raised to 2 is equals to A squared plus 2AB plus B squared, which is very, very wrong. Kasi hindi siya pwede, hindi pwedeng palitan mo yung statement na to, igagawin mo lang talaga siyang mali. Dapat yung, ginawa, yung, dapat yung gagawin nyo, yung ginawa ko kanina, as in maglet lang kayo. Although this is not an algebraic identity, pero hindi to dapat kasi yung statement natin, is an identity. Ilalagay lang natin na false, which is yung claim ng first, yung nasa left, left side na statement is magiging false to the right side. Kasi kung ganito ang lalabas, mawawala, mawawala yung value nitong ating other equation, yung nasa right side equation. So, kaya, wag na wag gagawin yung ganito, yung gagawin siyang by trinomial factor. Hindi siya tama. So, maging mali lang ang sagot nyo. For our last problem, we have here, if n is an integer and n squared or n raised to 2 is divisible by 4, then n is divisible by 4. Ang sabi dito, kapag daw ang n ay integer, ay isang integer, and then ang n squared ay pwede mong i-divide sa 4. Kung ano man yung value ng n, n squared, pwede mong ma-divide by 4 na, wala, na ang answer niya ay hindi in decimal or whole number ang answer. And then, n is divisible by 4. Tapos, yung n mismo, yung value ng n mismo, pag i-divide mo din sa 4, whole number din ang answer. Like, wala siyang fraction or hindi din siya in decimal form. Gagawin nating false ang isang statement. Dalawa yung statement dito, yung nagsa-start sa, sa if, pati yung nagsa-start sa n. So, depende sa inyo, at least one yung gagawin yung false, not both. Hindi bawal yung dalawa kasi Walang saysa yung statement na gano'n na mali silang dalawa. So, ano pa ano pang purpose nung statement kung mali silang dalawa yung claim na yun? So, dapat isa lang yung mali dito. Pipili lang kayo kung if or then lang. Now, for our case, gagawin ko ay gusto kong maging false ang then statement. Yung magsasart tayo sa then. Actually, pag mga ganito, pwede... Ang gagawin nyo is trial and error, pero magsa-start muna kayo sa mga smaller value and then kung hindi pa rin, tsaka na kayo kukuha ng mga bigger value for n. Now, considering dito sa atin, let's assume, let's assume that n, mag-assume ka ng value ng n. Let's assume that n is equals to 6. Yeah. Pwede kayo mag-assume ng another number depende sa inyo as long as may isang maging false dito sa statement natin. Now, assuming n is raised to 6. 
Now, kapag n raised to 2 or n squared, and then ang value ng n natin, substitute lang natin dito, which is 6 raised to 2 or 6 times 6, which is 36. Now, kapag ang sa statement natin, kailangan ang if na statement natin, which is from here hanggang dito sa sa kama, kailangan magiging divisible by 4 or pag i-divide mo tong value na to by 4, ang answer niya ay whole number. Kumbaga, walang decimal, walang fraction. So, kapag i-divide ko to by 4, this 36 divided by 4, lalabas na 9 ang answer. So, nakuha natin yung goal natin na maging true yung statement ng ating if statement. Sa, sa if tayo mag-start. So, true siya. Now, ngayon, dapat i-prove natin na false tong then para ma-counteract ma natin yung statement, para maging mali yung statement natin. Now, ang sabi dito, then n is divisible by 4. Now, since yung n natin na ginamit, which is equals to 6, kailangan daw, maging, uh, kailangan daw divisible by 4. Pero ang goal natin, gawin natin not divisible by 4. So, nung i-divide na natin to, Itong 6 divided by 4, lalabas siya na 1.5 which is not divisible by 4. Meaning, kasi dapat hindi to siya in decimal form or hindi siya in fraction form. Kailangan whole number siya para maging isang divisible ang isang number sa isang given na number which is 4. So, tama nang nagawa natin which is na counteract natin. True yung statement for if, pero pagdating sa then statement, naging false na siya. So, the statement, pwede tayong gagawa ng conclusion. Therefore, the statement, pwede natin sabihin lang na ganun, the statement, the statement is not true or false. Or the claim of the statement is not true or false. The same the same lang naman yun. Na-answer na natin to, okay na. Basta tandaan lang na huwag nyong gagawin na both sila ay magiging false. Like, dalawa silang gagawin mong mali. Kasi mag mawawalan, yung, mawawalan ng size yung statement. Kung baga, bakit pa andun yung statement na yun kung both naman sila ay magiging false. That's it for counter example tutorial. I hope may natutunan kayo. See you in my next video. Thank you.